What's up everybody and welcome to this video. This is the last video that I will ever record on this camera. Yeah, got you there, didn't I? Yeah, the thing is that I did something that I promised to myself that I wouldn't do before October or at least before September after the wedding. I did actually buy a new camera and well, I'll give you a few seconds to guess which camera I bought. Now, the camera I bought isn't the conventional camera that the average YouTuber uses. I think the most sensible camera that I could have bought as of now would be the Sony A6400, which is a crop sensor camera and therefore also much cheaper than the one I bought. But considering that I wanted to go full frame for a long time, most people would say that going for the Sony a7 III would be the best choice. On the other hand, considering that Peter McKinnon was a big inspiration for me to start this channel, one would say that I would go for a Canon EOS R, just because of the color science and the dual pixel autofocus of Canon. But once again, I decided to go my own way and I did pick up a drum roll. I picked up the Nikon or well Nikon C6 or Z6, however you want to call it. That's this beautiful camera here at the moment without the lens. Now, why did I pick up a Nikon, you might ask? Actually, I have no idea. <laughs> the thing is that I've been using a Nikon camera, the D7100 for photography, and the button layouts are very similar, so it's quite easy to get into. Also, the menu system is pretty similar. The cat just did something crazy, that's why I looked over there. I guess she just killed the bug. Oh well. Anyways, what was I saying? I know the menu system of the Nikon and also the button layout is pretty similar to the one I had. Plus I can also use the lenses that I bought for my D7100. Of course they will not be ideal, especially because they are cropped sensor lenses. But the good thing about this camera is that you can actually choose to take pictures or shoot video in crop sensor mode. So I'll be able to use my 70 to 300 lens on this camera. And because it is a crop sensor, it will give me a quite big zoom. This camera has also been recently updated to have IAF, so that means the, they are trying to copy the great eye focus system of the Sony. It's not quite there yet. It still has a lot of catching up to do before it reaches Sony's quality in IAF, but it's also not useless. And actually the only thing that I really dislike about this camera is that it doesn't have a fully articulating screen. It only has like a flip up and flip down screen, which is of course also great because sometimes I, I take photos or videos from the ground and well, having a camera that goes like that will really help me out doing that. The touch screen is great from what I've seen so far, but I've not done a lot of testing so far. It's actually just a video where I want to mention that I did buy this and I will test out some things about the picture profiles. But then what can I say? I do love the electronic viewfinder. I love it. I think that using optical viewfinders really are a thing of the past. Now that the electronic viewfinders have gotten so good, there's no reason to use optical viewfinders in my opinion. And if you want to know which version I bought, it's actually obviously the one with the kit lens because I didn't have any full frame lenses so far. Of course also with the F2C adapter so that I can actually use the lenses that I had on the Nikon D7100. But because this camera is quite special it uses the XQD cards which are quite new and quite expensive at the moment. I decided to go for a kit that also contains the XQD card and it also came with the camera bag. I guess the next step for now is to mount up the new camera and to see how it looks like. And what I will do for now is I will test a few picture profiles because so far I have no idea how they are. I've watched some videos about them so I will talk about what I heard but this is also some training for future videos. Alright, see you soon! Okay, here we are. This is the first time recording something on the Nikon C6. Right now I have no idea if I'm even in focus. The only big drawback that I see with this camera is that there is no flip out screen, so I don't see myself right now. I might be completely out of focus, but we'll see. This is an experiment right now. Also, the first thing that you will see picture-wise is that the frame is way larger. 
you have a way wider field of view just because this is a full frame camera even though it's only at 24 millimeters. Also right now it's set to the standard picture setting. From what I've heard that setting is way too contrasty so I have no idea if it even looks good right now. And also the preamps of this camera are pretty bad so I have no idea how I'm sounding right now because I didn't change the settings of the preamp so far. Now what I'll do is I'll change the settings of the preamps, I lower the microphone sensitivity to zero and I'll test if the microphone even picks up something if it's set up to zero. Alright, so setting the preamp to the lowest setting does obviously not work with this microphone. For that I have to use another microphone. The default setting was 15 and that seemed to work fine. Just listening directly from the audio of the camera. Now I'm setting it in the middle at 8 and I'm testing it if it works with this microphone. Alright, so with the setting at 7 or 8 you can hear something but it's very low. At least listening on the camera directly. So I set it to 13 for now. I'm sorry if the sound quality is bad because of the preamps, but that's what I've got going for now. I probably have to buy a better microphone in the future. But now that I'm sure that you can hear me and that I'm actually in focus, I'll start cycling through some picture profiles. As I said, the standard profile that I've been using so far is supposedly very contrasty. So what I'll do now, I lower the contrast of the standard picture profile. So does it look any different? I'm still using the standard picture profile, but I lowered the contrast to minus 3. So does it look any better? I'll just let it run for a bit. I wonder how it looks. Uh, and also in this video I won't do any color correction. So it's still at auto, but I did change the color profile to vivid. So how, how does it look with the lights in the back, with my shirt and the white, my face, anything different? I think that after that I will do some more detailed look of something more colorful to see if there are any differences between the color profiles. But that was vivid for now and now I think that the last one I will test is the flat profile that I will also be using most of the time when I want to do some more color correction. Okay, now I'm shooting in the flat profile. I've actually noticed that the flat profile is using some sharpening. So I have that on for now. So how does it look? Do you see a lot of difference? between the flat profile and the previous vivid profile. It should actually be everything less colorful, less intense, if it works as it is supposed to be. But because there is this sharpening applied, I think that I will take another shot with the flat profile, but with sharpening set to zero. <sighs> Sorry, everything is a bit skewed right now. I managed to move the camera because I'm a super big idiot, but whatever. So now I lowered the sharpness to zero. I don't know if you can notice any difference because it's just one step of difference. I will probably do more testing in the future. Of course, this camera does also support 10-bit analog recording, but that's only to an external recorder, which I don't have at the moment. And I also don't think that I will be using it in the near future. That's too far into professional filmmaking for someone like me. I don't have that time to go into color grading every video. But anyways, was there anything else I wanted to talk about? No, I think that's it for now. Oh no, actually, as I promised, I wanted to take some videos of something colorful to test the color profiles without just filming myself in the background, so. All right, so this is a standard picture profile as it comes right out of the camera. I think that even on the screen, I see how saturated the colors are. That's pretty interesting. So this is still the standard picture profile, but with the contrast set to minus three. I think that even on this screen, I see a difference, but I'll see it better in post later. Okay, this is now the Vivid profile. I see that it looks differently even on the screen of the camera, but it's hard to tell right now what the difference exactly is. Now we are in the normal basics flat profile as set in the camera. I can already see that the colors are way less saturated or contrasty. 
that's obviously what was expected in this situation but this also allows for more color grading in post this is the flat profile but with sharpening set to zero i don't see any difference here on the screen maybe i will see it on the big monitor but it might be that there isn't a big difference between these two profiles let's go back to the other video all right that's it for now i don't know the results yet i will edit this now on my new monitor finally yes i am looking forward to that we'll see how it turns out i still have a lot to learn about this camera but i think that i will be doing more videos about my steps of learning how to use this camera so that at least when i finally go and do some cinematic video outside i will be able to use the camera perfectly so thank you very much for watching i hope you had a great time i at least did have a great time filming this that's it for now and I guess see you next week. Bye-bye.